I didn't really pick up a camera until college, but my love for nature was born as a child growing up here on the Gulf Coast of Florida. So when I finally did pick up a camera and start photographing, it was really interesting how my aesthetic, my sense of lighting, what I thought was beautiful in the world had been shaped and informed by a childhood watching the sunset over the Gulf of Mexico. Um, I studied biology and anthropology in school and as I got into photography my storytelling, my journalism kind of dovetailed with my interest in conservation. And I had this amazing opportunity to do an internship with the Smithsonian Institution and two or three internships later I was in Central Africa in Gabon photographing a biological research expedition with scientists from around the world. And it was through that process I really learned the power of photography to take science and connect it with wider audiences, and in particular political audiences, to help protect supporting these places. Every time I got on an airplane and I left Florida for two or three months at a time and I came home, there was a new subdivision on what used to be a wild place or a cattle ranch. There's a picture in this exhibit that shows the type of sprawl that pushes out from our urban cores. And so it's easy to see what the whole state can become. So I'm so excited for people to be able to be here and to stand quietly face to face with our state animal. Most of the camera trap pictures that you see in this show you know, took on an average of two years to capture. Um, there are a couple pictures where a camera was on that trail for five years before all those elements came together into that moment. I mean, this is America's big cat, and it's, it's here, it's in the Everglades, it's on a comeback, and the only way it's going to survive into the future is saving the Florida Wildlife Corridor. Our, our best path forward right now is saving as much of the land as we can. And that's what the Florida Wildlife Corridor Act is all about. That's what the Path of the Panther Project is all about. It's helping inspire our state leaders. It's helping inspire citizens that we need to save this land and we need to do it now. You know, it, this, this might be a different Florida for a lot of people. And I think that's one of the important messages. Like this Florida, wild Florida, the land of bears and panthers and cowboys and Miccosukee and Seminole Indians and the headwaters of the Everglades. This is a wild and amazing state so much of it is hidden in plain sight. For our population, 22 million residents, 135 million annual visitors, their connection to Florida is beaches and theme parks and our urban cores. But the wild heart of Florida is still there and we still have a chance to protect it. And you know, likewise, the cattle ranches. I mean, the farms and the ranches and the forests, they make up almost 18 million acres, I'm sorry. The farms and the ranches and the forest make up the eight million acres of the Florida Wildlife Corridor that's not yet protected. And so saving the corridor isn't just about new state parks and new national wildlife refuges. It's about protecting the working lands. It's helping the farmers keep farming and the ranchers keep ranching and that's, gonna, that's what's going to help hold the wild heart of Florida together.